Y'all, I sat on this purchase for the longest. I had a maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro that I just bought last year that cost around 5K. So to be in this position now where I was considering switching over to the 13 inch, I just, I had just dished out a lot of money. So it's like, is it really worth the upgrade? Upgrade? We're gonna get into all the tea about what I like and don't like about this switch. I do hope by the end of this video, you have more information to help you make a sound consumer decision. So enough with the intro of a rant. Let's get into it. Early last year, I bought the 16 inch MacBook Pro fully maxed out. The only thing I didn't max out was the storage. And normally I do not replace my computers for at least a good two to three years. But as you can see, I ended up doing it. I maxed out the 13 inch as well. I do low key wish that I could have bumped the storage up beyond two terabytes, but I gotta give a big thank you to Crucial for sponsoring this video because they in essence helped me with that dilemma by hooking me up with two external SSDs which have been getting me through and we're gonna talk about these as well. Now I was nervous about this change y'all, but I was excited. I always wanted a computer that was comparable to the size of my iPad, but super powerful and efficient like a maxed out laptop or desktop computer. And I didn't have that until now. So let's talk about the design here. This to me is like carrying around my iPad. <laughs> I know this is bigger than my 11 inch iPad, but in terms of my thought process and reference to me deciding when and if I'm gonna bring my computer, I find that I have more scenarios now where I'm inclined to take this, where in the past, you know, I would probably leave my 16 inch at home just simply because I didn't want to lug it around. With this 13 inch, it doesn't matter if I need it or not. It's coming with me. But aside from that, much of the design is the same as before that we've seen on the 13 inch MacBook Pros. However, one thing though that I do not like is having just two USB-C ports. Ugh, I, ugh. That, that bothers me because sometimes I want to be able to connect my adapter to the right side and not feel restricted and always having to connect it to the left side. It has its drawbacks, but it's not a deal breaker. It's not enough to make me want to go back to my 16 inch right now. But as far as the type of laptop user I am, I'm definitely more so the type that docks their computer, you know, to a monitor like that one back there. Um, I do know with the new M1s that they aren't able to connect to multiple monitors. But in my case, mine's back here is a Dell 49 inch, so I don't need anything else. But most of the time, that's where I'm at work and this is my main computer. I do love the fact though that I can, you know, detach this from the monitor and take it with me and have something that's so compact in size, but just super efficient and powerful. Like that just means so much in trying to get my work done. I don't feel like I have a bulky setup. You know, with my 16 inch, sometimes I want it to work, but I didn't feel like pulling that thing out. <laughs> but I don't find myself having that same type of feeling with this. So yeah, that makes a huge difference for me. Now, when it comes to the speakers up here, they aren't as good as those on my 16 inch MacBook Pro, but they're not bad at all. They're just not as rich in sound to me. But quite honestly, I don't really use the internal speakers like that because when I'm out and about, I got headphones in. And when I'm home, I'm using the speaker that's connected to my monitors. However, before we go any further, I do wanna draw some attention to that like button down below. You can press it if you feel inclined to and the subscribe button as well so that you don't miss any future content. Just saying. <laughs> Shameless plug. Now, to go a little bit deeper into what kind of prompted the switch for me, is that with my 16 inch, I was noticing that it was starting to struggle a little bit. <laughs> like, the fans would kick in like that. Only two apps to open, Pages and Safari. That's it. It was low-key annoying because it sounded like my computer was literally fighting for its life, even with basic tasks. And those scenarios, you know, where I'm connecting my computer to my monitor, it's just it was just constantly hum. And in addition to that constant sound, it was heating up. On top of that, I felt like it was struggling to keep up with the task that I needed to complete. It's not a terrible computer, don't get me wrong, but with having those issues and then, you know, I guess hearing so many rave reviews about the performance of the M1 MacBooks, I kept finding myself just glancing over at them like, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should check them out, see if I have a better experience. I was nervous about making the switch because, you know, numbers wise, my 16 inch MacBook Pro 
just had a higher spec sheet in essence. But with the new M1 MacBooks, I just felt that that might make up the difference in the numbers. And it has. <laughs> because honestly now this 13 inch is outperforming if not keeping up with my 16 inch. So for example, I added a Final Cut Pro. I exported a 4K, four gigabyte file from my 13 inch and it took about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. I took that same project to my 16 inch and it took about the same time. So the fact that I'm getting a smaller computer with the same, if not better performance at a lower price point with a better battery. Yeah, I, I, was, I was happy, but, 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 but there are some limitations. I still do have my 16 inch, but I am going to be selling it. But right now we're just having some separation anxiety. But honestly, just keeping it real with you, I haven't really had to go back to my 16 inch because I have found that most of the things in which I need and which I use do work on the 13 inch. The things though that I've discovered so far that don't work up there are a couple of my plugins. Like I know I got plugins from Pixel Film Studios. None of them work. <laughs> that sucks, but is not yet to a point where I'm like, you know, dag, I'm gonna swap the 13 out for the 16 for those reasons. No, the pros outweigh the cons here for me as to why, you know, I'm still using the 13 inch. So there are some compatibility issues, but to help with that transition, in case you do run into some compatibility issues and run Rosetta. Now where my 16 inch MacBook Pro would hum all the time, the moment I would hit export, it would just make the most noise. And it might sound like a minor problem, but especially when you're trying to work and multitask, which I'm constantly doing. <laughs> because I know one time when a video was exporting, I tried to record a voiceover for another video, but the humming of the computer just made it possible and, and I was so frustrated because it's just like I'm sitting here like I spec'd everything out on you so why do you sound like this why are you acting like this it really left me perplexed so uh, needless to say though with the new 13 inch and in one it barely hums at all like I can count on one hand how many times I've heard this computer hum and I, I really don't even remember what I was doing at the time. I think, oh yeah, I was exporting a 30 minute 4K video. So yeah, I, I wasn't surprised that it might've made a little noise doing that. <laughs> but I will say though, something that I'm experiencing on the 13 inch that I never experienced on my 16 inch is that I have actually received alerts that says I'm running out of system memory. <laughs> I know, I know y'all, I know I've told one of my friends that and it was like, how Sway, how, how are you running out? But I'm definitely the type that has like seven apps open and probably one or two of those apps is an intensive program being Final Cut and our Photoshop. So it was scenarios anyway where I probably just needed to close down an app. Now, accessory wise, I'm not gonna dive deep into this, but I am gonna touch the surface of just a few that I am currently using and I enjoy that I think further enhances the experience that I have. And like I mentioned at the beginning, one of those key things being these external hard drives from Crucial. I have used hard drives from Crucial in the past and I've always been satisfied with their performance. So what I have in my hand right here is the, which model is this? This is the X8, I have the two terabyte version and then the X6 two terabyte version. And both of these perform extremely well. You can't go wrong with getting either. But I personally like to use this one, um, the X8, to store my videos externally because it does have a faster read and write speed. So when it comes to editing directly from this right here, I'm not sacrificing on performance. And then I like to use this little cute one right here. Oh my God, y'all. This thing is super tiny. I have not personally seen an SSD this size with the amount of power in which this has. Either one of these you can just toss into your pocket. Super slim, super portable, and travel friendly. But in reference to this X6 right here, I like to use this to store my pictures. So especially for my fellow creative professionals out there, if you're looking for an external SSD, I highly recommend either one of these two. No lie y'all, I transferred 108.45 gigabytes from this to my computer in less than three minutes. <laughs> that right there is a necessity because when it comes to your workflow, especially when you have to go from one you know, computer or a device to another, time is of the essence. And they also come with USB-C to USB-C cables that has a USB-A attachment. So you're good to go regardless of really what you're trying to connect to. And these SSDs are also drop proof. So you kind of got that rugged protection without the rugged look. 
<sighs> but if you can't tell y'all, I'm definitely a fan of these SSDs. And if you wanna find out some more information about them, I'ma link them down below. Yeah, another big thank you to Crucial for supporting the channel and also supporting my workflow. <laughs> to these external SSDs, I also like to use this after here by Satachi. It has all the ports in which I need in a compact form factor. And it does take up the only two USB-C ports that I have on my computer. But thankfully, it expands things in a way which makes it okay. So it has a solid connection. You don't have to worry about any cords hanging or anything like that. And Whoa, did I really just drop that? <clears throat> get back to it. And like I said, it has all the ports I need. So I have two USB ports, a USB-C port that not only allows me to charge my computer, but also connect an external display. And then a USB-C port for data transfer, the micro SD card slot, and the HDMI port. But I gotta carry it in something as well. And I thankfully have that. I've always wanted a book book by 12 South and it is so cute. It looks like a book and they were kind enough to send this out for me to check out. So I have been thoroughly enjoying this. This is the dream team right here, y'all. This book book 12 South case, my MacBook Pro M1, my Satachi USB-C hub and my external SSDs. The dream team, that's what we gonna call it right there. As long as I got these items on me while I'm out, I can get my work done. And speaking of, you know the one thing I didn't say was the adapter, the wall brick, the charger. I didn't even think to talk about that in terms of bringing it with me because the battery life on the 13 inch is stupid. It is crazy good. You know how sometimes, you know, when you watch the videos and stuff and they give the claims of what the battery life is, you take it with a grain of salt and you're like, yeah, okay. But no, y'all, I can attest the battery life on this is as good as they say, if not better. I know I took like a video call, I did some video editing, um, I browsed the web, I checked my email, like I was getting work done, I was good. And when I looked at the battery life, I was amazed at just how much it had not used. My 16 inch, if I was doing those same tests, my battery probably would have dropped at least a good 10 to 20%, if not more, <laughs> than what I experienced on the 13 inch. So I go out, I don't even think about carrying the adapter with me. And that's a good feeling to have that confidence in the battery on a computer. Or maybe you're in that scenario where you forgot your adapter because I feel like we've all been there. I know I have. <laughs> Um, you don't have to fret because on top of the battery being better, the actual wattage required in the power adapter is less than that on the 16 inch. And I want to emphasize that because with the 16 inch, I know one complication that I ran into was connecting it to an external monitor that could also power it. You know, like a lot of the monitors that I was eyeing before getting this one lacked the power to charge my 16 inch MacBook Pro. And that was a little frustrating. But I, you know, the 49 inch Dell back there, and I'll link that below because I know sometimes I get questions about it. But that one back there has been, you know, just fine and working with the M1 as well as my 16 inch. It actually has enough power to take care of my 16 inch, but it took me a while to find one that checked all the boxes that I wanted and that was definitely a big one for me. The fact that the wattage on the brick that comes with the 13 inch is less than it just kind of expands things more for me. It gives me less to fret about or have to look for. I feel like there's so much more I want to say but I can't think of anything else right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm I'm leave it to y'all to hit me up with some questions that you might have and maybe I'll do a follow-up video of how I'm feeling I don't know maybe a month from now or so but psh, I'm happy. It definitely has lived up to the hype for me and what I do. But I know depending on what you do, it might not be the best option for you. Because currently, at least, I wanna say it's not the best with programs like Premiere Pro. So if you're more of a Premiere Pro user, you might wanna look at something else other than this. For years, I have definitely been the type of consumer that typically gets a laptop that has a display that is 15 inches or larger. Like I just would get so mm, just nervous about having to edit off of a 13 inch or smaller laptop. It just felt like, oh my God, it's not gonna be enough screen real estate. But what I learned is most of the time I'm docked back here at my monitor. So when I'm on the go, I don't want a huge display. I want something more so compact and travel friendly with a lot of power and a great battery. And I'm so happy that the new M1 13 inch MacBook you know, delivered on all of that. And that's not to bash the 16 inch MacBook Pro at all, but it's just more so to appreciate 
what Apple has done with the new M1 MacBooks because spending five grand, let alone two grand is a lot, you know, but I see computers for me at least as an investment. More times than not in the past, I've definitely kept the computer that I've been using, you know, for years. I am the former owner of a 16 inch MacBook Pro now using a 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro and just as happy. <laughs> So yeah, in short to say, if you have been eyeing the new 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, of course, look at what your needs are, look at what your workflow is. And if it kind of aligns with my backstory, then I highly encourage you to take that plunge, to take that leap of faith and, and check out the new M1 MacBooks because they're definitely something to marvel at and enjoy and nothing beats your own personal experience. But I feel like the video is probably already long enough as is. So I will end it here and say, if you wanna check out more content, I'm gonna throw some videos on screen right now that you can enjoy and maybe binge a little bit. And if you wanna connect with me more on the web, I am on Instagram and Twitter. Feel free to give me a follow, drop a hello. But that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I got some more content coming, so definitely stick around. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.